Eternal Rock of Ages, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we want to say thank you because you are God. And I want to thank you tonight because with you there is no shadow of turning. Unto the Lord that answers prayer, all flesh shall gather. You have not called unto the house of Jacob to come serve you in vain. So tonight, Lord, I ask that you be glorified. Thank you, Almighty God, for the answer prayers. We say your name be praised forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And the people of God will shout a louder hallelujah. Please jam those hands together for Jesus. As you please take your seats majestically before the Lord of all the earth. I want to specially bless the name of the Lord tonight. For the great opportunity given to me. By our parents in the Lord. A father and a mother, Pa Enoch, Adejari, Adeboe, and of course, Mama, Mommy Folu, Adeboe. Thank you very much, sirs and ma, for nurturing us and for allowing us in your benevolence to share with you the same pulpit. It is my prayer, Daddy and Mommy, that the Almighty God, whom I serve, will keep you until the end in the name of Jesus. I also want to use this opportunity to thank all our leaders, our spiritual leaders. And I say again, thank you, sirs and ma, for the opportunity. And to the congregation tonight, I want to announce to you that your day finally has come in the name of Jesus. I've been asked to speak to us tonight on a topic that says the rod of fire. The rod of fire. I want somebody to lift up his or her voice and shout the rod of fire. Wherever the Lord can find the most believing saint tonight, may your answer come speedily in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice again and say, The rod of fire! I'll be taking my text tonight from the book of Psalm chapter 110. The book of Psalm chapter 110 from verses 1 to 2. Psalm 110 from verses 1 to 2. And I read. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. Thank you for saying amen. The rod of fire. What is the rod? And what does the rod stand for? Anywhere you have seen the rod. The rod typically stands for authority. I say the rod stands for authority. According to the scriptures that you read as our text, Psalm 110 from verses 1 to 2. Psalm 110 from verses 1 to 2. The Bible says that the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength. And when the Lord sends the rod of thy strength, he said the result of that will be ruling in the midst of thy enemies. So the rod typifies 
authority. The Lord typifies authority. Whenever you see a shepherd boy leading his flock, one thing that you normally will find in their hands is a rod. And I have found most recently when I saw a young boy that was heading cows, the only thing he needed to do to control his cows was just to stretch forth his rod towards the direction he wanted the cows to follow. And I was surprised that evil animals responded to the rod in his hand. Just like every situation will begin to respond to you tonight. In the name of Jesus. So I said the Lord typifies authority. According to the book of Psalm chapter 110 from verses 2 to 3. Or from verses 1 to 2 rather. So what is the fire? What is the fire? I already said the rod typifies authority. What then is the fire? In the scriptures, fire generally typifies God himself. It typifies divinity. And it typifies the Holy Ghost. For example, in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 24 verse 17. Exodus chapter 24 verse 17. The Bible says that the glory, the appearance of God's glory upon the mountain was like a devouring fire. The appearance of God upon the mountain was like a devouring fire. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. Hebrews 12 29, it says, Our God is a consuming fire. If you know that your God is a consuming fire, lift up your voice tonight and shout fire. Is this how much you can beckon on the fire? Come and say fire. So if the rod typifies authority and the fire typifies God what then is the rod of fire it simply means the rod of fire is fiery authority what did I say fiery authority I have come to discover as a Christian that you cannot deal properly with the kingdom of darkness or the powers of hell or any mountain without having authority that is fiery authority by fire so in the next few minutes, I'm going to be illustrating to you in the word of God with the life of a man who had the rod of fire, who used the rod of fire to his advantage. Is none other than the man of God and the servant of God, Moses. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Moses was a man who commanded fire. So I'm going to be speaking to you about the four major stages. The four major stages Moses went through to arrive at his destination according to the purpose of God for him. The four different stages Moses went through to arrive at God's destination and purpose for his life. Number one, 
Stage number one. Moses had the promise without the rod and the fire. That's stage number one. Moses had the promise without authority and fire. In the book of Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7 from verses 23 to 29, Acts chapter 7 from verses 23 to 29, the Bible says when Moses became 40 years old, it came into the mind of Moses to visit with his brethren. And as Moses was visiting with his brethren, the Bible says Moses saw an Egyptian maltreating an Israeli or an Israelite. And Moses, in an attempt to defend the Israelite, killed the Egyptian. And the night came. And the second morning came. The second day, as Moses was going out, Moses saw two Israelites fighting. Now, these are two brothers. So the Bible says Moses moved towards them and asked them, You are brothers. Why are you fighting one another? And the Bible says they thrusted Moses aside. And they asked him, who made you a ruler? When they asked Moses that day, who made you a ruler over us? The question they were asking him was the question of authority. They said, Moses, who made you? They were asking Moses, you want to bring God out of captivity? Where is your rod of fire? This was the question Moses could not answer. The Bible says, according to the book of Acts chapter 7 that we read, or that I mentioned to us the other time rather, that Moses thought they should have understood that it was by his hand that God will deliver Israel. And I see the children of Israel say, the rod of wickedness does not respond to zeal. It responds to the rod of fire. The rod of wickedness does not respond to zeal. It responds to the rod of fire. So they asked Moses again, where is your rod of fire? And on the day that should have been the day of Moses' shining, Moses was sleep, uh, speechless. On the day that your voice needs to be heard, may you not be speechless. This was the problem. That chased a child of destiny for 40 years. And Moses found himself in the wilderness. Because he was with the promise. But without the rod and without fire. Stage number two. Stage number two. I said the first stage is the promise. Without the rod and the fire. Stage number two. The stage of the rod for Moses. Moses ran away. He came to the wilderness. He found himself in the house of the priest of Midian. And Moses who had the promise became the one who was now going after flock for the next 40 years. You are here tonight. Thinking that the Lord has forgotten you. Hear the word of the Lord tonight from my mouth. Under God and under the authority of my father and the Lord. The day of your remembrance has come. So 
before the stage two came, the stage of the rod. Moses now had a rod in his hand, looking after his father-in-law's sheep. And then Exodus chapter 3 came. Your Exodus chapter 3 coming tonight. Exodus chapter 3, as Moses, in the 40th year of his wilderness experience, was going with his father-in-law's sheep. All of a sudden, there came an appearance of fire burning in the bush and was not consumed. So Moses turned aside to see and all of a sudden, somebody called the name of Moses from the fire. Moses! Moses! If it was in the 21st century, I would have had Moses say, who, who is calling my name, oh? Jesus is calling my name, oh! Moses was saying, who is calling my name after 40 years? As far as I'm concerned, no more destiny. And God said, I have opened the Exodus chapter 3 of your life. I remember you today. So God said to Moses, the time has come to return to the destiny that you abandoned 40 years ago. Moses said to the Lord in Exodus chapter 3, how can I make this thing happen? When they ask me, who sent me? Because Moses remembered they could not answer the question of who made you that year. And the Lord said to Moses, tell them, I am who I am. But despite the fact that God said, I am who I am, Moses was still afraid. So now God asked Moses, Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Starting from verse 1, the Bible says, God asked Moses, what is that in your hand? When God asks you a question, he already knows the answer. Moses said, the rod. As if God doesn't know it was the rod. God wanted Moses to confess. I now have, I now have authority in my hand. Stage number one, I said, the promise without the rod and the fire. Stage number two, the rod. And stage number three, submission of the rod. So God said to Moses, what is it in your hand? He said, he said the rod. He said, submit that authority before me. So Moses took the authority as if God was saying to him, if we must proceed to the next level. The rod of Moses must become the rod of fire. So he said, cast that rod. And Moses threw the rod on the ground. From the time Moses picked the rod, the rod ceased being the rod of Moses. It became the rod of fire. Moses submitted the authority of man to fire. And as soon as God found the rod on the ground, God stepped into the rod. Praise the Lord. Now if you see Exodus chapter 4 verse 20. Exodus 4 20. When Moses eventually took his wife and his two children. And was going to go and fulfill his destiny. The Bible says he returned to the land of Egypt and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. As I come to a close, Moses now could stand before Pharaoh who there stands before an established wickedness without the rod of fire. Who? So now Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus hear the Lord, let my people go. Pharaoh said, Exodus chapter 5, verse 2. Exodus 5, chapter 5, verse 2. Pharaoh said, I don't know the Lord. Who is he that I should obey him? And the rod of fire in Moses' hand 
performed almost all the miracles that God did through him in Egypt. Only because God mixed with the authority of man, the rod of fire. Finally, if you want the rod of fire tonight, only you should please shout hallelujah. But Psalm chapter 125, Psalm 125 verse 3, Psalm 125 verse 3, the Bible says the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth his hand into iniquity. So upon whom will the rod of wickedness not rest? The righteous. So if you are here tonight, you have never surrendered your life to Jesus, or you used to be born again, but you backslidden. If you fail to run to Jesus tonight, the rod of wickedness may not make you see tomorrow. So I beg you by the mercies of the Almighty God tonight, when Papa comes up tonight, to make the altar call. I beg you in the name that is above every other name. Before he can even finish making the altar call. Run like never before to this altar. And salvation will meet you at that altar. You are ready for the fire of God tonight. Jump on your feet and shout hallelujah. I give you only one prayer point tonight and I beg you to pray like you have never prayed before lift up your voice and say father is this how much you can call your father come and say father send the rod of fire tonight into my situation that I may overcome the rod of wickedness. Lift up your voice and cry to God. How many of you are praying this prayer? Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are praying this prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed please lift up your two hands the prayer you are prayed tonight if i serve a living god the answer cometh right now in the name of jesus thank you almighty god for the answer prayers we say your name the praise forever in jesus mighty name we are prayed